Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 4. Last time we explored more of our surroundings, finding out what happened to our gun for example. We've got a lead on that one to get our gun back. We've uh, had a chat to the strike, uh, the, the union workers. We've had a chat to the people that are demanding to work. We've encountered a, a few more um, wonderful personalities, wonderful and not so wonderful personalities around uh, around this quaint little war-torn town and last episode as well we also started delving into a little bit more of the political side of Revachol of, of Martinez in terms uh, from uh, the loyalist per, uh, perspectives the communist perspectives you know uh, all of that kind of stuff is really coming into into shape and I uh, was was caught off guard from it coming through uh, last episode and I was like look I'm not, I'm not, don't know how I'm going to tackle this so far because I need to actually understand a bit more of what's what's going on and I think I've just been like letting a few things brush past me and um, I've sort of gathered a little bit more of an understanding um, and and gone back through uh, previous episodes as well to, to really kind of look at what happened and when we look it was like looking at sort of the, the situation with uh, communism and how people uh, feel about it or view it uh, in this in this game so far in the, in this story. It's like, it, it seems that communism was you know because we're building it again. That it seems as if it was this thing where you know it, it used to be that way uh, and it failed uh, miserably as you know then the coalition uh, took over and that's sort of how things are at the at the current you know in the current uh, current time and then we've got uh, people providing their commentary on that uh, in all sorts of different ways and it looks like to me that there is four like political stances you can take but but looking at it um, and really taking it in it's, it seems as though uh, it isn't like I think it really casts all four of them uh, in a not so great light it seems to almost highlight or that seems to be the point of the uh, political ideology of this game is not uh, role play as the as the person you are or the person you want to be because I think I don't think it's in I don't think it's really possible uh, to do so because it seems that all of the the, the the four political ideologies in this game are very extreme versions of those like for example when we're in the pawn shop and we have that thought that's like rebuild communism and it starts saying some things that are sensible and then some things that are very extreme uh, you know and, and it go and I, I feel like it will do that for for the rest that it seems that it's it's very much in this mentality of you are the most extreme version of that political ideology and I think that really has something to do with the type of character and the type of person that that our character is he's a very extreme personality he's got a lot going on he's not doing so well you know and we've had this you know medically induced drunken nightmare amnesia episode where we have forgotten absolutely everything and we're fighting against so many personalities in our brain really just talking to us suggesting things that we don't even want to do that we're like oh, I don't want to do that and the brain's just like do it anyway and it feels like that really translates to the political form of this game where it's like you go full on into uh, those things while also you know you, I think you can you can dabble and have multiple viewpoints and, and different dialogue choices and you can probably you know uh, affect all four of those political ideologies but uh, like I said it, it doesn't seem to draw any positive uh, it's not like it's not done in a positive way it's not done like they're not shining that spotlight on it being like this is the golden shining positive morally good path this is the awful terrible path even though there are things that are that way it seems that it's 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 not so black and white uh, like you can be ultra liberal if you want like the 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 most biggest ultra liberal <laughs> you want uh you can be a moralist which seems to be more tied to being very passive about things and be and taking a probably taking a bit more of a back seat like there was an option we chose when we were speaking with renee last time that was saying like i don't I don't think I just do you know what I mean like not really engaging in that in that conversation 
and then obviously there's the, you know, there's do it, the communism, anti-capitalist train of thought, and then there's fascism, which is objectively the worst, um, but it, it, it kind of, it puts them, it lumps them all in that same thing. If that tangent makes sense, I'm really just, I want to do respect to the, the medium and the story and the world that is being told, so I wish to you know, engage and understand with facets of that and probably not focus so heavily on uh, whether there's a right or a wrong answer or whether I need to pick the or pick or say the right things. You know, it's not necessarily I need to remember at the end of the day that while we are create, we have created our own character in a sense. And it, and it is kind of like an RPG at the same time. We as the player are not this character uh, that we're in the boots of. Uh, he's very much established as a very particular type of person. Um, so it's not like our character is a blank slate that we can form and mold in every sense of the word with, you know, uh, from from every sort of aspect. He's very much established in his personality as a, as a very particular type of way, uh, which we are certainly not. So um, I get very immersed in my RPGs. I'm literally playing three at the, uh, right now. <laughs> I'm with like going across with uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, uh, Elden Ring, and Disco Elysium. Three very different worlds, very different viewpoints and ways of thinking, um, and different world building, different events, all of that kind of stuff. And um, when you get very immersed and uh, very attached to your character and their growth and what they do, it's a, it's a very interesting dilemma where you're met with a situation where your character that you're playing as, you can definitely put some of your personality in there, some of your choices in there, but at the end of the day, uh, this is a whole, this is a person that we are, you know, playing as. We are puppeting this dude through this game and sprinkling some of our own choices and personality in there, but it's, uh, I'm not going to try, uh, to really follow a particular line or a straight line. Uh, we have committed, however, to, uh, to a thought, um, which is for, um, Mazovian, uh, Mazovian socio-economics, uh, because, you know, people think communism was some crazy idea that had its commandments 40 years ago, um, but we are going to bring it back, apparently. We're going to, we're going to bring it back. Rebuild communism in the year 51. So apparently that's the political pathway or ideology that we have um, uh, committed to uh, in this game. But I'm very curious to see how that's going to evolve, how that's going to grow and change and how, you know, different experiences and different characters that we meet, uh, we've already met some very peculiar ones, uh, will shape our story and, and how we interact with them. But I did just want to take that that brief moment just to sort of go over that um, and, and acknowledge what seems to be a pretty big uh, and hefty portion of, of this game. And I mean, it, it has to be, especially when you, you're dealing with uh, like this game has excellent world building, like how it's really kind of setting this, the scene, giving you the history, showing you the, the events that have taken place, why things are the way that they are, why things look the way they are, why characters act the way that they do, and it's it's very, very Im impressive. So uh, trying to do just my you know absolute best to make sure that we, we go through this world appropriately and I um, respect every every blood, sweat and tear that has gone into crafting uh, this this lovely game. Uh, so, welcome to part four, where this time we are going to proceed to explore a little bit more of our location and uh, talk to some more people that we can see over here, inspect some things. We've got a few things in our journal uh, to check out uh, that are time sensitive, uh, but not for a few hours yet. And Something that I something that I actually quite like and appreciate about the uh, the, t the date and time uh, in this game and, and how it works is I can take these moments to uh, take pause and recount thoughts and and, and talk about everything and uh, analyze things without there being a time pressure without it being go oh crap I have to pause the game or I, I can't be idle because then I'll miss the 9 p.m you know, debrief with um, with Kim. Uh, what's cool about it is that the game only progresses in time when you're actually doing things, when you're engaging with people, having conversations, um, involving yourself with the world, which is, which is really nice and reassuring uh, that you know that you can just progress that way. And there, there isn't a pressure 
in that sense to always keep track of time to be like oh crap because as long as you're not engaged in a conversation or something like that you'll be able to manage your time uh effectively and i think with with that one a uh, bit of a long-winded but i feel necessary intro let's continue with uh with disco elysium so we're gonna head uh we're gonna head over this way let's have an inspection about these things over here to the roundabout north and to the uh capeside apps martinez pier nice the ad reads broken window tibbs has windows if you had a bag in your hand, perhaps you could collect these bottles and sell them. I still need... I still need a bag. This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. <laughs> fossilized bubblegum. Okay. Poor little viewer. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. Let's look inside. <laughs> a thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word, <laughs> Ona, written on the other side, with N and C scribbled backwards. Perfect. Kuno is so clever. There you go. Bit of, bit of that Kuno graffiti. Kuno's been, Kuno's been everywhere, man. <laughs> That's Kuno on the lens. Perfect. Thank you. Shift your focus to the background. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast, studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. Interesting. A church on stilts. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis, or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonassian church, a star, a great moral height, to be strived towards. Star of Perikonasis of the Cairo. The church looks old and weather-worn. There are no lights in the windows. Around the large wooden building you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach and a small tent set up on the ice. Nice. I actually fully expected um, us to not be able to see much. I know that the coin slot was fossilized, but I didn't know if the, you know, the the view would be would be open. So it was cool that we were actually able to get some nice descriptions based off of that. That was that was cool. And then I, this is another one. So this coin operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert twenty five centimes and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. Interesting. Five centims. Pull the handle while looking inside. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? What's a tourist attraction doing here? There was a revitalization project in 49. A design studio tried restoring Martinez to its pre-war glory. It didn't stick. What happened? They got as far as the street lamps and the statue on that intersection. Then something went sour. I suspect that something was Evart Claire, the union leader. He muscled them out. It's how it usually goes around here. Interesting. Street lamps and that statue, then something went sour. Can't we do something about it? We should have done something about the union ten years ago. That ship has sailed, officer. Okay. Um, man, I am poor, but it wants us to insert a coin. We will live frivolously. Let's spend that. Spend that cash. Let's insert that coin. Your money disappears into the coin slot. A clunk. The ring of metal. Pull the handle and look inside. The curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry. Different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab grey shape. Like a ghost. Turn the knob to focus your vision. The lenses shift. The ghost sharpens into an islet in the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible. A half-sunken sea fort. It's concrete almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. Wow. 
There's some kind of, uh, there are ruins of some kind of building there. Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it out. Oh, the lieutenant takes off his glasses and cleans them. Cool, well we got some information based on some stuff that's um, pointing in, in different directions, so there you go. Uh, we've got some giant bulls. <laughs> we need to, and that's another thing we need to do, we need to uh, get ourselves a replacement bull because we uh, played spontaneous shot put, unfortunately. Uh, I forgot, we're just going to quickly have a, oh there's our bag, there's our bag. I'm going to quickly chat to this um, sober, definitely sober human being over here. Music's my life, man. Better watch your mouth around me, boy. The things I've seen and said, nothing I can't do. I'm the job for every man. <laughs> Listen, boy, I don't start trouble. I fix it. we kicked out of every joint in Rivershall. You hear the distant squall of seabirds. It's my bag. I'm taking it. Yeah, yellow plastic bag. Frit. To collect tear from the streets. Nice. Okay, let's do that. Let's collect some stuff. Um, oh no. I can't... Ah, oh, hang on. Do I have to equip the bag? Yes, I need to equip the tool. Equip this to collect tear from the streets. Uh, this plastic bag has frit. Sick written on it in a dynamic, forceful manner that implies great prices. As you crack it open, a multi gust of air flies in your face. Smells of yeast and beer. A perfect place for tear. Okay, let's uh, chuck that in there. We got a bag. I can't investigate the bin anymore, but it looks like it now highlights new items, so we can collect. Nice. This is how we get. This is how we're going to get money, I guess. Nice, we're gonna be an environmentalist now. We're cleaning up the streets of Rivershaw. One one bottle uh, at a time. Hell yeah. So we just need to be on the lookout for that whenever we walk through. Uh, I don't know if the bag has a inventory limit, uh, but we will keep an eye out and then we can um, recycle, recycle stuff, which is actually quite exciting. Because we're going to get money. Now, unfortunately, it looks like once you inspect a bin like that, but you don't have a bag, you can't inspect it again, which is what's happened to the other one. Uh, which is uh, which is a shame. Let's have a look at this. Nice. 2.34 real. And then... Splatter of bullet holes lines the wall. And then, uh, obviously, we are... Not able to go <laughs> across that way. Alright, so we're now going to go this way. We've got a few over here. Alright, I'm going to have to keep my eye out on bottles. Otherwise, I can just hold tab and highlight everything. I don't know if that's an option, actually. If you can just have... Um... I'm wondering if it has a way to... It'd be nice if you could maybe toggle... Uh, it'd be nice if there was... Maybe you could toggle highlight. Oh, actually, hang on. I think right-click. Oh, I could just right-click instead of holding down tab. That's nicer, actually. Yeah, I can just hold down um, right mouse button. That's fine. A lonely comorant surveys the sea, indifferent to your approach. Yeah, I'll do that. Just hold down this to highlight things. Okay. Oh yeah, baby. We're going to be rich in no time. Capeside Apartments. Rue de saint Ghislaine, around about north. Inside, the frame of a motorcycle in repair and the tools used to disassemble it. Oh, I love the detail of the... Hey! Up here, Pico! Interesting. I love the... Um... That smoke coming out of the chimney. Pigo, huh? If I press... Take all... Okay, it doesn't come up with like a... Yeah, you better keep walking. I still have to like... Pick them one at a time. Okay. Ooh. 
A signal blue naval coat. Plus one to suggestion, minus one to half light. Let's take a look at this. We got new clothes. This classic double breasted coat suits everyone. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Suits everyone, including you, and if you ever find yourself battling winds at the helm of a ship, then the coat's heavy fabric has got your back, even if the moths have left a few holes in it. Uh, and that will replace um, this one, the Spirit Decor. Okay, so this one gives us <laughs> allergen watermarks. Uh, one to a Spirit hey, Decor. Up here, Our half light is already pretty bad because it's physique related. Our half light is already at two. Let's take a look at it though, in terms of a fashion, in terms of fashion sense. Nice. We'll keep this on for now. More clothes out of the trash. I love it as a concept. Everything of ours is just recycled. There's a girl up there. Did she spill the paint? I have to find out. As I guess the way up must be through this door. Looks like there was more construction here once, decades ago. The belly of this boat shines like it was recently painted. Some magnesium, nice. Actually, I should probably use that because <laughs> we're on our last one and I don't know, I think, do we, if we run out of morale, if our morale goes down to nothing, I think we might suffer. Uh, so just in case, I will use one to heal morale slightly and then if there's an event that happens that heals our morale later, um, that's nice because uh, then we've already got an open slot for it. Docking reserved for residents of Rue de saint Ghislaine 33A. Hello friend, we got someone over here. Your room in the Whirling isn't much bigger than this sloop. This is worth more than you'll ever earn in all your life. Yep, that is a depressing thought. That is a depressing thought. Let's have a chat to this guy. A striking woman leans Let's have a chat to this woman. ...of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Joyce Monsieur. Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. I'm Joyce, and I have money to afford this lovely yacht. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbour. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Ah. The board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbour. Okay. Joyce L. What does the L stand for? That's a great way to, to make the introduction. <laughs> I'm going to say, what gave us away? Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. Lovely. Is it the bag of bottles? Relax. She meant it in jest. I'll shake her hand. I'm glad to see you here. Her grip is tight and cold. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will. Gladly. Ah, so she's here to handle the union strike as well, which makes sense considering Wild Pines own the harbour. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. Thank you. How interesting. <laughs> I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. You seem rich. Can I have some money? <laughs> Man, we can really ask for money by from a lot of people, huh? Hey, spread that wealth, comrade. Uh, tell me about Wild Pines. What do, you, what do you do? What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It, it's a giant undertaking. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent... Okay, so what do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. The Wild Pines group is one of the original Revisholian Indo-tribes. 
companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo tribes remain. Okay. Who are the other Indo tribes? Son Baptiste, L U M, an unknown entity known as Brightest Star. Okay. You're in good company, it seems. Why, thank you. <laughs> she does not register the real meaning of the remark. <laughs> Uh, how much money does Wild Pines have? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. Can I have some? A billion? <laughs> what exactly is a billion? It's a number, officer. A big one. What is it made of? It's made of 1,000 millions. A million is made of a thousand thousands. Wow. Okay. The money I owe is so much less than that. Yes, past a certain point, numbers begin to seem imaginary. But they are quite real for the 72,000 employees who depend on Wild Pines for their paychecks. A conglomerate the size of Wild Pines is like a shark. If it stops moving and growing, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? It is a tremendous responsibility. Where does Wild Pines get all these billions? They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago, when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the Suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. It probably helps to start out with a royal monopoly. You know more than you let on. Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. Okay. What does such a huge system want with a place like this? You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? I mean, you don't keep it moving. The workers do. The company is nothing without them. We built this district. She says calmly. We. Oui. There it is. She owns up to it. All the best parts of it. Rue de saint Gislaine, with its bastions. The plazas, meteor and mosaic. Even some of the old street lamps have been put back thanks to the investments from the WP. She points behind you where the seawall rises. Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbour, even before it was part of Revachol, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revisholian employees. A company getaway? For a weekend or a summer holiday? Then came the revolution. But that's another matter. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. Okay. With your help, hopefully, <laughs> says her warm tone. Okay. Um, you're on a boat. Why, yes I am. She looks at the deck under her feet. Green and white sails flutter overhead. Uh, not a lot of people on boats, are there? Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? Wait, we're on an archipelago? <laughs> yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Um, Caillou? I thought we were in Revachol. We are. And the city of Revachol is on the island of Le Caillou. Nice. Thank you so much for your confirmation. <laughs> it's so funny to just pursue the very, uh, the very silly questions just here and there, just to see how they speak to us. It's it's funny. <laughs> Still, I haven't seen anyone else sail a boat around here. Do you mind using your boat to maybe pick up that gentleman, uh, that Barry the Butcher guy? He's kind of being tormented by his friend eating salami in front of him. If you wouldn't mind, maybe like letting him hop on and then dropping him off. Um, I, th I feel like you'd appreciate it. I mean, he's been stuck there for quite a while. I mean, and I, th I think the salami, you know, that's it's, it's quite an emergency. So I haven't really seen anyone else sail a boat around here, so if, if you could help. 
I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Hey, to shake him. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Ravachol Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revachol, between the city and the islands. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. Yes, I do. Before you do, it would be pertinent to ask other questions. Gather more info on this boat of hers. You are so right, Rhetoric. Does she have a name? Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How oh. else are you supposed to get around? I pressed the wrong button. I uh, confused the hell out of me. <laughs> Hang on. Yes, we Let me are. get out of here. We are. And the city of I haven't seen Actually, it's for I'm just picking the same options. You need to before you Okay. Do. Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19 because that's the type of sloop it is. Cordelati 19. Okay. You should probably you should probably give it a name. It sounds like a sounds like a virus. The word it feels strange. Such a beautiful boat deserves a proper name. Cool, but your boat really needs a name. Okay. How about Cordelachi 19? Why? She taps on the side of the boat. It makes a hollow sound. Because it was manufactured in Revachol East by a company called Cordelachi, and its hull is 19 paces long. How about Dolores? Why Dolores? I don't know. Feels pretty. Hmm. Well, it means nothing to me. I think I'll stick with the factory name. But thank you for the suggestion. What kind of boat is it? It's a pleasure craft. A 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for Category 1 racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. Oh yes, experimenting, uh, experiencing a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of races, do you? How do you like it? My slew? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. <laughs> Sorry, Kim. I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. Um, do you have a license for this boat? Officer, I assure you I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. Okay. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. <sighs> Uh, love that. Her nonchalance might be related to something called the Wayfarer Act. A law that says she doesn't need a license. Sly Fox, you're not aggressive enough to harass her further on this. I'm not aggressive enough to harass her further. <laughs> this is the problem with not being, not making my character a big strong meat bag and we went for more of a, a brainsy boy and it's really funny uh, let's talk about the economics of this boat that you're on go in for the kill oh my the e-word you mean to say that it's a symbol of conspicuous consumption that I'm a member of the ruling class precise mundo class war time baby detective May I remind you that Mrs. Messier is a professional negotiator. He doesn't look like he thinks you'll best her in single combat. Then what does that say? Does it say docking reserved for residents of Rue de saint Gislaine, 33A? 33A? This old proletarian haunt here. As I said, plenty of people drive boats of all social strata. We have a 58% chance to fire back quickly because we know about the revolution and it's the eel's heels. Come on, be on my side. Clap back quickly. Your synapses flash. <sighs> my synapses flash. Funny. I don't see any other eels, heels around. There doesn't seem to be much space left with this 19 piece sloop docked here. This house was built before the revolution. Okay. Okay. 
We've got a challenging success. What is my clapback going to be? It's 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 a good thing that we we thought fast, but our uh, time has crawled to a halt quite literally as we choose to say funny. I don't see any other eels heels around. You mean eels hips. But point taken. I am a bourgeois woman and this is my fast, light, interminably bourgeois boat. I think I have a handle on the boat thing. Good. She takes a sip of her thermal cup. <laughs> All right, so relevant, so, so relevant to the murder. What can you tell me about this strike? Everything, right up to, but not including, trade secrets. What if I want to hear about trade secrets? First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. An octopus? I will slay it. Good luck is only kept in place by the vested interests of half the civilized world, including your own. Fair enough. What the man means is that the Emergencies Act and the RCM both get their authority from the coalition government. Yep. You'd be shooting yourself in the foot, in other words. Thank you, Logic. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. Uh, what is your role in this, precisely? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. Okay. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Mm. Now they won't even let me into the harbour. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Oh, you mean Measurehead? Yes. Jean-Luc Measurehead. Jean-Luc Measurehead. She leans back and rolls her eyes. Okay. How are the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. Okay. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. <laughs> so it had already been going on for two months. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he granted the union in prior negotiations. Ah, okay. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike. Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. Ludicrous even. It's meant. Hmm. What happened to this Scormont? Mr. Clare told him to, how did he put it? Shove it. Fuck off, midget. Oh. Gaumont is oh. short of stature, you see. Ah, uh, not cool. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Oh yes, every worker, a member of the board. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. I like it. Then you might also like their other slogan. Demand democracy. Mm. Yeah, it's a good one. Personally, I don't think it has the same pizzazzo as every worker, a member of the board. Well, what exactly do they mean by it, though? What's the demand? It's quite simple, you see. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about what? About anything, really. It needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. <laughs> the king is dead. Long live the workers. That's pretty funny, I have to admit. They're having a blast. But how can they afford it? After four months, my assumption was they would prefer a more practical solution. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. 
Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. Right to work. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? Good question, Kim. This is why you're my partner. I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. <laughs> Reaction speed. This checks out. Okay. Nice. Uh, the scabs at the gate. Did you put them there? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrog come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? If they were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not right now, at least. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Okay. Tell me about this Union boss, Mr. Clare. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Really? Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. She has a thick, viscous glue where you and I have blood. <laughs> is, okay. Is he that bad? He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of him? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does, and when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. Okay, so Edgar has a lazy eye. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, uh... with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. Okay, what about the union itself, outside the Brothers Clear? The Daybarders Union was once a perfectly normal institution. 20 years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? <laughs> she hesitates, looking for the right expression. A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Damn. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. So Everard and Edgar. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs Union is... So the Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Okay. So I would probably say a giant leech sucking the life out of Rivershaw. Indeed. And a hungry one. Sadly, while Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades, however much you feed the leech, the leech always hungers. Damn. One more thing. You said something happened in the elections? I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Hmm. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Eerie. Downright haunting, if you ask me. The Wild Pines suspected foul play, but what could they do? It was a union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Okay. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. Okay, that's all I need here. Let's change the topic. Of course. How else can I help? Uh, well, what can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. 
quite a few things, huh? Contemplating something. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Secret task complete. Interview the Wild Pines rep. I like doing secret tasks. It makes me feel like I'm being thorough. <laughs> the information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. All right. Uh, names and badge numbers, which means we have to get our badge before we can get this information. Mm, I don't have my badge number. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Remember when my partner told you I'd recently suffered from an unusual medical episode? My lost badge is related to it. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world, this city, nothing. I'm just going to go with, uh, um, yes. I can't hear you, darling. Speak up, please. <laughs> I really like this thing in the game. All right, so this is another thing that I want to mention about um, when we were going into the the, the political split with, with the ideologies is um, that the moralism one seems to be quite a, a centrist uh, approach. It's, it's very you're very kind of like you, you take a back seat and you you take the uh, take the coward's way out and you don't really involve yourself, comment on things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but the game also the game also shames you for that uh the game also makes fun of you for that in the same way that it does with all of the other political ideologies but like you know it, it does it in these in these dialogue options where you when you try and just do the, the the just the we'll just try and wrap this up and we'll go um yes you know just to keep the conversation moving and then the, they 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 clap back at you and then they're like I can't hear you. You're being you're being too quiet. You you're gonna have to speak up, and you're gonna have to say one of the bigger sentences, you know, because um, it's not the first time that this has happened either. It's just like, uh, it's, it you know, it's one of those things where it's like you 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 shat in your bed, you know, and you and you gotta eat it. Okay, that's how that saying goes. You ever like shit in your bed, and then you have to eat it. Make make the bed now shit in it. That's that's what the game makes you do. It makes you eat in your shit bed. You know, so we're going to say the second one. I could have uh, eaten it for all I know, you know. I don't remember anything. This world, this city, nothing. Oh dear. I suppose this does explain some of the more curious turns in our conversation. That, yeah, I'm a very curious person. She must have been suspecting something for a while now. <laughs> As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional. But he is an officer of the RCM. A damn good one at that. Of course, I sympathize. But I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. I knew it. I knew it was gonna the badge was gonna be the roadblock. So we're gonna have to to get her info on the lynching. We need to find our badge. And we we don't have a lead on the badge yet. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Okay. Look, I can try this and we'll see. If it doesn't work out, though, we can always... You know, it's a red check, so it can't be retried. But, I mean, as long as we get the badge, we can come back. We have sympathy for the amnesia, but we're going to have to take a look. So, suggestion. 42%. I'm feeling 42% positive. Feelings will guide the way. We were one point off, dude. Ooh, that's terrible. One point off of a success. But madam, I need to know about this lynching. It's very important to me. It's the case I'm solving. I assure you, it is no small matter for me either. We all share the responsibility for disarming this situation. I hope you have a badge for me as soon as possible. You have so much else. I only have this. This is the entirety of my existence. She's silent. The wind flaps the sail above her. This boat, for example, and a home somewhere. I only have this case. Officer. 
so this is a good reason why we healed our morale earlier, because I feel like we just avoided death, right? I don't know what happens if we run out of morale. Do we pass out? I don't even want to find out. <laughs> I don't remember anything except this lynching. There is only this coast and this lynching. You know, I don't mean to sound cold, but if you want something, you have to give something back. More than just guilt. Okay. You're doing it. Despite your own best efforts, you're still getting in. Somehow. Interesting. I'll be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something tangible. Like what? The Union is conducting drug trade out of the harbour. It's an open secret in Martinez. Surely it must not come as a complete surprise to the RCM either. Perhaps it's time to look into it. Mm, she wants us to now perform a drug bust. Or you can find your badge, which honestly seems like a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Oh, excuse us for a moment, madam. Interesting. Lonesome. Long way home. Oh yes, about my, my way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market. Past the Boogie Street Spearhead to the other side of the lake. The frozen eye at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store on the corner. There, at the end of a street lined with pine trees. A small house, no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Wow, okay, so we've got get, got our home address, but an older one. 11 Voyager Road, we no longer live there. Learning cap for perception raised to five and speed gives one um, to, our, um, to our psyche. Okay, there you go, we have a we got some stuff happening. We got some stuff happening. Now we can't, you know, we have to wait until we've got a skill point to uh, to unlock that. Okay. This is not going quite as I hoped it would, detective. <laughs> the lieutenant's voice is hushed. How did you, how did, how did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance and, you know, not volunteer us to be her henchman. Really? I thought it was going so well. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along. Or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. Uh, well, you know, we could just, you know, find my badge. Oh. That would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. The situation might have changed drastically by the time you locate it. Time is of the essence. Interesting. So we're getting pushed into trying to get through this without locating the badge. You could request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. What do you, what do you propose? That we don't investigate the drug trafficking? No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. Okay. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the lynching. Okay, uh, let's get back to her then. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Okay, um, I like as well that when um, Kim was like, let's have a chat, it does pop up with like a speech bubble here to, to draw attention to being able to speak to him. Okay, tell me about this alleged drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, man? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. 
Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. <laughs> Uh, let me get this straight. The materials come from Samara to Revishol through the terminal? Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Says drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and you want us to investigate? Yes, but you won't get anything out of Evrat and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. The lorries? Precisely. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbour into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they're vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. She gives you a knowing look. Her irises are light green, like the river Esperance in bright daylight. Upstream, where it's clearer. <laughs> I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. Okay. Why didn't you come to the RCM earlier? We did. On more than one occasion. Apparently, there's some sort of inter-precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. Mm. We know the company has launched its own probe into the Union's alleged involvement. We also know it's come up empty. It's not just the RCM. No one's been able to find any hard evidence. Until me, baby. Unorthodox detective man. Well, here's your chance, officers. Okay. It's no coincidence the lorries are stranded there like that, is it? No. We asked East Motor Track to raise the drawbridge. The road company is a partner of one of our subsidiaries. However... However? She pauses, looking to the sea. This is a limited time opportunity. Once the complaint has been processed by the Trade Committee, they'll have no choice but to lower the drawbridge, and the operation will continue. Thousands of litres of raw ingredients will pour onto the streets of Revachol. Not the east across the river, but the west. The vulnerable. The weary. Well, at least this solves one mystery. Okay. What is that, Lieutenant? <laughs> Why I had to call East Motor Track and beg them to open a drawbridge for me. I'd wonder since I first drove in, on my motor carriage. Huh. True. That's how, it, okay, yeah, makes sense how he's like, you know, it's not like it went up as he arrived. I am sorry for the inconvenience, Lieutenant Kisaragi, but we need them trapped here. This is a unique opportunity. I'm sure you understand. Nice. We now have a skill point, so if I go into my thoughts, I can now unlock a new thing. Bam. New thought bubble unlocked. Now, I can do white morning. Um, and we have, you know, the problem. And the funny thing is, we don't, I don't think, we don't get to know what our bonus is going to be after, you know, after we get it. And then what if we, you know, what if we want to learn Mazovian socioeconomics? Or all of the other ones we're going to get. Do we have a, do we have a... A limit of because there's a lot of thoughts there's a lot of thoughts in this game uh, I don't know if we I don't know if you will get every thought I don't know if that's how the game works if you get every thought throughout the course of the game depending on what you do but it, it feels like a lot of these thoughts come up based on your dialogue options or things that you investigate uh, so it might be possible to get a lot but it seems like what you'll need to do uh, is it looks like we have 12 slots. I don't know if it goes up any higher than that. Um, if we unlock more over time. Um, if not, it looks like what we'll have to do is you need a skill point to forget. And then to be able to um, either equip another one. I don't know if forgetting it deletes it and you have to rethink about it. Or whether it just like 
puts it away and we can equip it again later. Um, it's, it's interesting. So I guess you just probably get to a point with your thoughts where you look at, you know, the bonuses from the thought and you determine, you know, what's actually worth keeping in your little, in your little tiny pea brain or not. So, because you, you get a skill point every 100 experience, so it makes me wonder if there are bigger and better ways to get experience later on. Um, but we will, we will see, but uh, I've opened up that thought. I'm not sure if I want to continue with White Morning. But it looks like it's, uh, it might be stuff related to, you know our past because it's talking about you know the man, little man's forgotten its name and he still remembers this feeling and look he moves the feeling animates him and it reaches out for the feeling's best friend a bottle of commodore red puts on his disco smirk clothes and gets smaller and smaller we will see um what proof do you have that the union is involved how do you think they're financing this strike there are thousands of unpaid dot workers going strong for the fourth month straight there was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due respect to these desert cacti, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The local businesses can scarcely provide for themselves. So you think the strike is being funded with source ingredients for drugs? Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night most likely, then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. Okay. Okay. I've made up my mind about the smuggling investigation. Yes? We will take this case, probe the drivers, see what it yields. Excellent. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. We'll see. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I can keep the drawbridge up for a few more days at least. You should have the time you need. Okay. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. So we're gonna have to re you're gonna have to open up some conversations again with those previous lorry drivers that we've spoken to. You seem smart. I need someone to give me a lowdown on this reality we're in. This reality? Yeah. Yes, reality is your side case. Yeah. An experimental side case. I'm conducting a personal investigation into the world that I find myself in. How truly curious. A sort of philosopher detective. E exactly. My theory is that this inquiry into the nature of reality will ultimately converge with our murder investigation. They are really one and the same. Are they now? A deep synthesis. I'll assist you however I can then. Go ahead. All right, we're in. I know these all look good, but begin with the first, okay? <laughs> I love it when we just like, we get those tips, you know? All right, these all look good. Start with the first. Where are we? We're in Martinez, baby. Baby? A casual term of endearment popular among the 50 plus crowd. It's a disco holdover, pay it no heed. I'm a disco holdover myself, you see this outfit? <laughs> Aren't we all? That's right baby, Disco Elysium. I said the name. She refers to your corresponding ages. Yeah. So what are we, some kind of Disco Elysium? And what is Martinez? Martinez is a district of Revachol. A very small district tucked away near the industrial harbour, north of the 881 and Jamrock. You would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. It has its charms, just not this time of year. Okay. Tell me more about Martinez. I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once before. As a teenager, not a lot has changed. There are ruins, a terminal, fishing boats, reeds, boys with boxy shoulders. <laughs> As I told you, Martinez used to be a province, a workers' resort before the city swallowed it and the artillery did its part. 
Now the reeds are the real star of the show here. The further down the coast, the wilder it gets. You mentioned a sea. What sea is this? It's not really a sea. It's the Bay of Revachol. And the bay feeds into the ocean. Are we near the ocean? Yes. We are on an island in an ocean. The world's largest body of water. The Insulindic. The Insulindic. Known to the early river Sholians as Les Immensités Bleu. The Blue Immensities. The Blue Immensities. Vast, lukewarm and unknowable. Flowing in and out of sight. Thank you, Inland Empire. What's the name of this island? Caillou, as you already know. Imagine a pebble. A smoothed over pebble amidst a great blue sea. Misshapen, cracked. The cracks are the river Esperance. We're in the delta of this river on the sixth branch. The Martinez distributary. It is clear this pebble is of enormous value to her. Yep. And to humanity at large. Okay. Uh, that's Martinez. What's Revachol? Revachol? Revachol is what you call a city. Yeah, and, and what kind of city is Revachol? The great kind. The great kind. As if it's self-explanatory. Beyond patriotism. A fact. What makes Revachol great? History, detective. They built this city to resolve history. Our part in it, at least. Our centuries. Okay, who, who built this city? The nations of the Occident, or migrant workers from Seminine and Il Mara, depending on your creed. Well, when was Revachol built? In the DeLorean century. 380 years ago. Cool. And why will it resolve history? They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will be answered. The tensions are highest, the fault lines deepest. By that I mean conflicts. Ideological conflicts. The stuff of men. Ah yes, ideological conflicts. Why here? We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island able to sustain up to 200 million people in the middle of the Insulindic Ocean. The world's connective tissue. It's where the money is. So, we're in an unimportant part of an important place. I think it's fair to say so. Martinez is about... She points across the water where the skyscrapers rise. A sparkle of lights on the horizon, like evening stars above the curvature of the planet. <laughs> 22 kilometers from the center of the world. That soldering iron is the bank of the world building. The bottom floors are Insiacom. Coalition government, Insulindian Mission Command. Wow. Look to the sea. Silence. She lowers her hand. The water, the light. It's as though you're seeing it for the first time. There is no recognition. Only the immensity of the sea and the cold radiating from it. We're going to start getting existential when we talk about the sea and its endless void. Where are we? We are where we are. I have no true answer to give, unfortunately. Wow. And then getting a thought gained. There you go. Based on talking about that, we get a thought because we ask the question of where? Where are we? Really? Derealization. Jamais vu. So there you go, there's another thought to get. 3 hours 25 minutes. Revachol Special Administrative Legion, Le Caillou, the Insulindian Ocean Coalition Government, Insulindian Mission Command. Name after name, and none of them is familiar. They seem real, but something is wrong. You feel like a kid looking at stickers on the fridge, Truvant, the Apricot Company, World Games 34. You can almost see your hand reaching out for them. Scratch at the corners, see if they peel loose. This feels like the most important of all thoughts, the one you truly must complete. I'm gonna... okay. We're, we're getting into derealization, baby. Let's get some jamais vu happening in our lives. We must complete it. Okay, thank you so much for your time. This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Exactly, where are we really? I'm thinking about it. Was there something else you wanted to know? 
I remember something about a lowdown. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> now we're getting deep. This has been informative. Thank you, man. I'm sure my memory impaired partner has many more questions to ask about even more fundamental aspects of reality. Yes, I do, actually. Might I suggest not asking them all right now? Ma'am, Monsieur will be here later, too, and tomorrow. Isn't that true, ma'am? <laughs> Absolutely. My commitment here is long term. But won't I be lazy if I don't do it all now? If I ever skip over things and I decide to push something off till later, I never hear the end of it. Won't I be lazy if I do it all now? Oh, of course not. You are already diligent for getting this far. And diligent boys remember where they left off. Oh, thank you, Kim. Indeed. I'm always at your service. I'm always at my service. Okay, so... We can conclude for now and come back later. I'm going to take Kim's suggestion. So we can come back here and we can... We can get more of a reality lowdown at another time. It's 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 getting a little bit later. Like the sun has set. It's uh, we're approaching dusk. You know, um, sunset has passed. Uh, so we can conclude for now. We've essentially gone over. You know, where are we? And we can ask the rest uh, a little bit more. So we'll say that's all for now. Glad to have been of assistance. And then I. I know. And then I can come Anything back else? here. And I can come back here. Uh, you seem rich. Can I have some? Can I have some money before I go? Is what you want to say, but it isn't that easy, is it? What? Why not? Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. What lustrous hair! A well kempt yet tastefully short bob of dark hair. Despite the first hints of grey, she's elected to keep it oh natural, shaped into a permanent wave. Late 40s style. Positively statuesque. <laughs> While dull orange pearls hang from her hair lobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry. Wealth and all its possibilities. These are the kind eyes of the rich man that seem to say everything is possible. Within reason. <laughs> Yeah, so? Now look at you. You misery-clad simian. Barely able to tie your own laces. Your armpits are lakes. A scythe of booze precedes you. Your hair sticks to your forehead and your underwear feels uncomfortable. How did you know? You're poor. Poor <laughs> as balls. You can't ask this person for money. <sighs> poor too. as... Poor as balls. <laughs> ashamed. I'm not ashamed. What is this feeling? I've never felt it before. Yes, I should make my own goddamn money by now. What is this feeling? I've never felt it before. Shame? You haven't really been in the presence of gentlefolk either, have you? What shame is there to be felt in front of these dock workers, cops, and hotel clerks? But to belittle yourself in these eyes of Odinil. As I was saying... If there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. I love that, where it's like, voice breaks the silence and suddenly you're back again. Nearby, a seagull pecks at a piece of garbage. So, and, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Mazovian socioeconomics approve. S spread that wealth, baby. And we've heard of the fact that billions exist. Charge! Throw the dice, baby. Voila, you're doing it. We are doing it. We did it. You seem rich. Can I have some money? Why, yes, I am rich. How much money do you need? Hopefully not too much. I couldn't bring all of it with me. <laughs> Billions. She's surprisingly nonchalant about this. Could it be that she somehow knows more about your predicament than she's letting on? There's no way she gives us 10,000. I want to be realistic and ask for 100. That way we can buy a book from the bookstore. I'm going to ask for 100. That's a good sum. Not too small. Not fantastically large. 
She reaches into her raincoat and pulls out a zip bag. In it, you see paper notes arranged like black gills. She removes a few notes and hands them to you. The paper is cold and oily mm. to the touch. Spread the wealth. So, I hope I didn't just bribe you, officer. It may not be technically illegal under the Emergency Act, but still. <laughs> you bribed me, all right? I'm your little peony now. Uh... Funny that you're worried about this and not your ruthless exploitation of the entire human race. <laughs> Alright, we're not gonna... We're not gonna... It's fine. We've been bribed, so I have to be nice. <laughs> We've got a hundred! We're rich! End the game, baby. We're rich. I've got money. That's all. That, is that all that matters in this society, in this world that we live in? Is as long as you have money, you have happiness and everything you can ever want. The lie... That we are told to help us sleep at night. I'm still getting my head around this whole money concept. You were just helping me out, you know. You're right, man. That donations are permitted under the Emergency Act. And seemly as it may be, as long as they are properly logged with a precinct. Yeah, of course. We'll, we'll definitely log this one when I go shopping at the bookstore. Which he most certainly will do. Now, how else can I help the RCM today? Besides supplementing its salaries. <laughs> Thank you, that's all for now. Of course, detective. Take care. Thank you for your money, and your generosity, and your kindness and knowledge. I will be back for more tomorrow. Wonderful. I feel like I've just, um... I've really just... We've spent a lot of time here, haven't we? We really just had, like, a full-blown... Conversation, you know? And got to know this person. I think that's a really fascinating part of this game is being, you know, very dialogue heavy. Um, you're, you're, you're talking to people, you're getting to know people, you're getting you're getting a lowdown on reality. Like quite literally, you are getting a lowdown on reality, and I think it's amazing. Um, and I think it's it's really uh, hard in a in a video game. I think, or at least to me, it feels like it's it'd be really challenging to construct dialogue in a game in a way that feels very natural, very real, very human. That there was no part of that conversation that felt unnatural. Like we we're playing a video game and navigating choices and like looking at it from the outside, looking in. It it the the flow of conversation, the flow of dialogue, how you you know say these things. And you get your response, and then you're talking about other things down the line in that same conversation. And then references are made in the dialogue to things that you spoke about or addressed earlier. And it just it feels like just a very well thought out and executed dialogue system uh, that I am just... It's, it's, you just get very immersed in because it's so real. Like we, we quite literally had such a naturally flowing, uh, give or take some humorous moments, a very naturally flowing conversation with another human being. Um, and it's, it's, it's just very cool. It's just very cool. 10 out of 10. A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. Better knock. The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. Better knock again. The door rattles again, but this time you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. Is that a gun she's holding or just a, a, a weapon? She is concerned. Hold on. Who am I speaking to? Doesn't matter who I am. Now go on, get out of here. Cleaning lady. From within comes the faint sound of a broom sweeping across the concrete floor. Uh, this is the police. Open the door. <laughs> the police? Everyone knows the police don't come round here. Ah, uh, but I'm not joking. No. I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. Okay. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. She trails off, leaving the sentence unfinished. Backyard door. There must be another entrance to the east. Kim, tell her we're real policemen. Madam, I assure you, we are real police officers. The lieutenant repeats dutifully. There is no reply. <laughs> Just faint sweeping sounds inside. Okay, we'll leave. 
We're going to have to find another door um, off to the east, apparently. Um, we can go over this way. Ah, oh, we can go to the other side of the fence to the other child. So, we are currently at 8.30. So, if we have a look at our tasks, um, we'll return later for that. We've got the jam mystery to interrogate drivers about smuggling. Um, we have this one here, which actually quite nicely has a little clock next to it. So this one says, Kim can answer any lingering questions you may have about the case and the RCM. Join him on the Whirling and Rags balcony after 10 p.m. when you're calling it a day, which is nice. Um, this one says, you know, they'll eventually show up, keep an eye out for them, of the union men that gather in the mess hall of the Whirling and Rags. It seems like that they may gather around this place um probably around night time it just it just seems like seems like they would um so we will we will see but we've we've still got time we've still got time so we'll uh we'll investigate as we as we are Let's talk to this kid are you trying to sneak up on me come to slit my throat in my sleep yes kuno s i have Apparently, she doesn't like people standing behind her back. Logic error. She is not sleeping right now. Logic error. <laughs> Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. Are you sleeping right now? Don't get fucking clever with me, pig. You think you're so clever. <laughs> well, Why did you say in your sleep? Oh, just okay. Trying to sneak up on me again! Trying to snuff me out! Get away, pig! I have encountered an error. Um, I, uh, we're, we're okay. I think it's just because I the, the game auto-saved as I was engaging in dialogue, maybe that might have been an auto-save error. That's alright, let me just quick save instead. Okay, now it says that we have... Do we have items? I don't think we have items, but it's it was... It was glowing. All right, well, we'll leave that kid alone. A garden hose. This won't be much of uh, much of use until the snow melts. Ooh, more people up here. Chairs and tables eaten by rain and rot. Is this free clothes? <gasps> Clothing for free. Just a closed door, but you look at it suspiciously. Can I do anything about the door? No. These barrels are half full of rainwater. If I click on that, I think I have to be up there to get that. Yeah, I have to be up there to investigate it. I knew I should have quit. A balcony with a view in the yard. View to the yard and the hanging. Specifically mentions that it has a view of the yard and the hanging. Let's try this door. There must be another way into the building. Oh, Kim. Why did What's that noise down there? <laughs> um, maybe that's the error that we just encountered, which is Kim's voice just shattered my eardrums. You know what I'm gonna do? Um, I'm gonna quick save. I'm gonna restart the game, and maybe that might that might fix something. I don't want this error to potentially snowball into something. We just had Kim give us a, a huge wake up call there. Now they show up. So I'll be back. It's been a week and now they show up. They're talking about us and maybe something about quitting. So let's proceed this with this thought when I fix this game. Okay, so we are back and we have reloaded in. And we've reloaded in with a thought bubble. Yeah, what's that noise down there? We've reloaded in with a thought bubble. Which is, that smoker up there could be a witness. Talk to him. So there you go. Um, he's making commentary. He was making commentary about stuff. Another splattering of bullet holes on this wall. Um, so yeah, it was pointing stuff out. So I guess we can chat from down here. But I'll try this door. There must be another way into the building. How they show up? Okay, I have a... Okay, I have a... I guess a, a, a theory then. Then You know, it's not part of that error, but... There must be a glitch with Kim's dialogue tied to this door. Which like makes like it's for some reason it's just louder than everything else. It's almost it almost like I can't get involved in this. It almost like overlaps. <laughs> so that's weird. Let's move on. Let's talk to this guy. 
you see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Yeah, so he's been watching this area, making some interestingly cryptic commentary. Not looking for any trouble, officer. He says in a quiet voice, despite the cold, his shirt hangs unbuttoned on his frame. Okay, why are you, why are you whispering? It sounds like you're already in trouble. There's no trouble. I'm just speaking in a lowered voice. He says, sotto voce. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Why don't you want to be seen with the cool kids, huh? Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Actually, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to you. Is it really that important? He asks you, adjusting his shirt. Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. Mm. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Okay. Smoker on the balcony. Can you tell me your name? My name? My name is Martin Martinez. You're a terrible liar. That's definitely not his real name. You're not actually called Martin Martinez, are you? No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? He scans the courtyard. It's silent, like the bottom of a well. Every sound captured and reflected back. Okay. Looks like you've got a good view of the Whirling's backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? No. Wait, is someone else investigating the lynching? Hmm. Did you look at Kim? No, not you two. Some more muscular type. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? The lieutenant takes out his little blue notebook and writes something down. Is our muscular gentleman our two plus meter racist? Last week? I don't know. Look. He looks around the courtyard again. Old patio chairs and dead houseplants litter the scene. He's an actor, declaiming a soliloquy. See how you hang on his every word? <laughs> Drama. <laughs> you didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. What kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. Your Sunday friend. Okay, cute. A Sunday friend? How intriguing. Mm, what's your friend's real name? Did, did, did they see something? He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. Under the dull and darkening sky, the neighboring windows stand silent. Interesting. So we did get, we, we got information uh, unknowingly that there is someone else asking questions about this, a muscular fellow. So we've gotten information still. We'll talk later. No. We won't. Okay. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Damn, okay. Convince him to stay. 42% chance. We really need to up our suggestion. Next skill point I get, I'm going to put one into suggestion. Bam! Time to bring out your secret charm. Tears and begging. Show him your emotional side. Throw yourself before his very feet like a dog. What do you want from me? Do you want me to cry? Huh? No, for God's sake, I don't want you to cry. He takes a quick step back and looks around, clearly disturbed. Listen, I really have to go. With a flick of his wrist, he sends the extinguished cigarette sailing over the rail. Good luck with the investigation. The smoker on the balcony. He walks away. He walks away. Damn. And we're off. What do you think, Kim? He's gone. We should run after him, see where, he see where he went. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. 
<laughs> I like that it's zoomed in enough so now I can see the just the giant dick drawn on the, the door. That's good. Well, good graffito. <laughs> uh, so we just give up? He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot can happen in a week. There has to be a way of getting inside the building. Let's go check out the door near the pier again. Once we found the way in, we can ask around for his apartment. See what's like what's really cool about this, right? Is it says like this is what I was talking about with dialogue that feels very real and natural. Is Kim says, "Let's go check out the door near the pier." again you know like they've accounted for the fact we've already checked that door which is very clever great let's do that okay and we'll eventually i guess get over get over this way so good in good information actually let me take a, i just forgot i need to use tab highlight some stuff yeah some money and some morale which i'm probably actually going to need to do do we risk it? Do we risk staying at one morale? Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just continue quick saving, and we'll see what happens when we eventually run out of morale. If it happens, we'll play a little bit risky with it. This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Damn it! Even with conceptualization at five, it's still an eight percent. Impossible. Even plus two in the dimming light, some things become clearer. Why am I looking at this wall? 8%. You have no clue. Huh. It's just a wall. Hmm. Just a wall. So many walls all over Martinez. Weather worn. Cracked. They're paint peeling. Okay. I'll get you, wall. Just you. Wait. I will figure out the mystery of this wall. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. Turn it over, baby. There's a key beneath it. Rusty from the dirt. Yeah, nice. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has hundreds of apartments. How are we going to find the right one? We'll just have to go in and see. Okay, put the stone back. Nice, we've got a key to an apartment. I need to remember to investigate. Orange bum hat. Plus one reaction speed, minus one rhetoric. And it's moose fed. Okay, we got a new hat. We actually don't even have a hat yet. Oh, just right click. It's easier that way. Nice! Oh, I am... This, everything's all beautifully coming together. Uh, rhetoric, bum brain. Reaction speed, feeling twitchy. Now, if I quickly have a look at my skills, my rhetoric has now gone down to a three... Hmm, my rhetoric has gone down to a three, and then my, uh, what was the, what was the other one? Reaction speed has gone up to a four. My rhetoric has been very nice to me. Now that I've put this hat on, it'll seal away the rhetoric thoughts. An orange beanie with a couple of big ass holes on the side. Looks like it might have been used as a mask during an armed robbery. Great. <laughs> Just what I just what I love. Alright, looks like we're able to go in here. I will briefly investigate, but we are approaching, you know, we're close to 10 p.m., so we gotta take this. Take this easy. Eviction notices and missing pets are plastered on top of each other. This box is filled with cleaning chemicals. Smells of laundry detergent. Ooh, flip up glasses, the auditor, plus one logic, minus one authority. Look, we're already terrible with our authority anyway, aren't we? What is that? Authority... Oh, authority's at three. It's not, it's not too bad, actually. So a minus one takes that to a two. But plus one to logic, which is currently at a four already. Eh, I'm not feeling like I, I should take... I'll try and keep my authority at a three. It'd be nice if you could, you know... Uh, I know that the whole point of the fashion ties in with also your stats, but there's part of me that also is just like, I want to be able to benefit from, like, the fashion. These flip-up sunglasses were fashionable in the old, but have since lost their popularity. Their thin gold alloy wire frames are a reminder of the drug-addled bohemian artists. These days, the glasses are only favoured by organised crime accountants who desire to look cool. 
<laughs> cool. All right. Let's have a look around. An old shoe rack. Boots, sneakers, and old slippers. Hmm. These shoes come in three different sizes, so I'm assuming we've got a family. Apartment 12. A loud rumbling snore comes from within. Door number one. Wait, did we just unlock it, or was that was it unlocked? <laughs> Ask around for his apartment number. Oh, is this key like? Uh, is this key like a? Did we just? Did we unlock it? It sounded like a key sound. Moss crawls on the boat. Those bathroom tiles. Actual moss. <laughs> the shower curtains are covered in some sort of slime. Nice magnesium and. Commodore Red. More wine. Nice. And some money. God, the UI is so nice. Really like how effective it is. Someone has drawn a five-pointed star on the wall. Money in the shoes. Hope you didn't need that, because it's mine now. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk-drawn number on the board says number 11. Let's have a knock on the door. Let's examine the padlock, because that one seems like it's... We're not summoning attention right now. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Time for a little snip snip. Do hand scissors. I'm going to say refrain from commenting. I'm, I'm, I'm already embarrassed enough around Kim. The lieutenant is concentrated on the hallway, scanning both ways for any approaches. Wow, okay. We can use the chain cutters to cut through the padlock. Well, let's knock. No reply. Okay. Can we continue knocking? No reply. Okay. Damn, we... Uh, I don't know if this is the best idea to just... <coughs> uh, straight up just cut through. Let me assess the environment first before we go straight into using chain cutters to go into a random room. But we'll keep an eye... We'll, you know... We'll keep it on board. Because I believe we have, um, yeah, we've got the chain cutters equipped. So we'll leave that. We'll come back. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. There's our, there's our uh, cleaning lady that is ignoring us. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. Yeah. There's always that tension of an unexpected door knock. A poor communard, from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Um... The dialogue was different. It said something about the room being small. It's, it's, I think it's, it's accidentally said something that it shouldn't have. Should have said, this time the steps come closer. Who is this? Demands a female voice, wary and tense. But it said something different about the room being like a cupboard. This is the police. Open up. Do I have to open the door? You hear the clacking of heels again as the other side walks right up to the door. Her tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. Yeah. All right, we'll leave. The door number nine is locked, and also like different. I like the how the doors are not just copy pasted, but they have different like feels and and textures about them. The mailbox is overflowing. The graffito says a firing squad for the rich. Hello, cleaning lady. Give me a moment. An elderly woman is leaning on her broom, her knuckles white as bone. She seems to be having difficulty breathing. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> Are you all right? Should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Um, she starts coughing, red spots appearing on her cheeks. Now. What do you want from me, policeman? Yeah, you remember me from earlier? You know, when I said I was a policeman? Look how well-dressed I am, holding my bag of bottles with my fingerless gloves, my beanie, and my uh, crocodile shoes. She's the cleaning lady. 
She knows the floor plan and the residence. Who are you? I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. I'm no one. Who are you? If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. <laughs> okay. Well, she lives in the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. <laughs> and that's all I need from this world. I'm looking for a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair, skinny build, a smoker on the balcony. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil. Right? She looks at the other end of the hallway. Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? No trouble. I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try not to laugh. You might have a heart attack. He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Okay. I have a few questions about those apartments. Ask away, policeman. Is one of the residents on a vacation? Their mailbox is overflowing. People come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. They probably just moved or died. Hopefully somewhere else. <laughs> Who lives in apartment 10? No one lives there. It's been empty for months. But I talked to someone through the door. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. She pauses, eyeing the hallway. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? Maybe we got squatters? Sure, I'll go see what I can find. Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. Interesting. Who lives behind the padlocked door? Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. A scientist? Suddenly the old lady's face is beaming. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Astrology? Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. Are you sure you don't mean astronomy? That's what I said. Astrology. <laughs> the lieutenant shakes his head as though to say, let it go. I, I hear you, Kim. Come on, people. Try to keep up any standards here. It's not about stars. It's... Forget it. <laughs> That's all, thanks. She mumbles some kind of a response, then hacks something into her handkerchief. Okay, I'm off. Uh, well, now we have a reason to investigate uh, the seemingly empty apartment 10 that is not empty. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. This apartment is supposed to be empty. Did you break in here? Excuse me? Of course not. You have plenty of reason to enter. Okay. I don't need a warrant if I suspect there's been a break in. Oh, come on. There's a pause before you hear the door being unlocked. That was smart. The lieutenant says, nodding toward the unlocked door. Nice. Hi. Interesting. And then the, we have the dialogue that it was talking about how it's very, very small that we heard earlier that I kind of like went over. But yeah, it's very small in here. Looks like a fine mattress. Don't be ridiculous. You can hear it swarming with bugs. <laughs> a blister pack of medicine peeks out of the box. You should take it. It's plus three now for, uh, morale for Hypnogamma. Nice. Oh, nice. Black monk straps. Plus one to indirect modes of taxation. Nice boots. 
Shoes, I should say. What do we currently have for is plus one composure, minus one savoir faire. These Per and Ingersoll shoes have no lacing but a strap and a buckle. Due to their elegant and affluent design, they've been described as the most advanced dress shoe. So advanced, in fact, that walking through slush and mud does not leave a single trace on them. Plus one to indirect modes of taxation. Affluent moneymaker man. What is that? Indirect modes of taxation? Wait, that's not a thing, is it? That's just a... So that's a passive skill. That's not related to... Okay. It's not related to any of the big ones. So we'd be getting rid of uh, some additional composure, but we'd also gain back some savoir faire. So it doesn't add anything here. Oh, that's already, that's still at minus one because of the flare cut trousers, right? Okay. Indirect modes of taxation, affluent moneymaker man. Does that mean we just get more money with these shoes on, maybe? I don't know. We have so many tasks to do, though. Mmm, the luxury of fine things. Just look at those black monk straps. After spending an entire day hustling, who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes on your tired feet? <laughs> You're right. Beautiful things do make people happy. Beautiful things give you a rush. It's power. Crafting your style, draping your flesh in silk and leather, deciding how to present yourself to the world. Material girl, baby. Remember, when they come to take it away from you, you worked <laughs> for those shoes. Whether you like it or not, wearing these shoes has made you more liberal. Ultra liberal. Yeah, ultra liberal, okay. So there's that term being thrown in. So it's ultra liberal is also financial related. So ultra liberal is uh, related to finance, I suppose, as well. Let's have a chat to this woman. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier, and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in, as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? Jingles a set of keys in her hands. Well, why can you say so if you're just a real estate agent? Like, <laughs> why are you going to be so suspicious? Interesting. That smile, though. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit, too? She fumbles through her purse, fishing out a light paper-clad passport. Sure, I'll inspect it. You're handing it to me. It feels flimsy in hand, with the words... Revachol Zone of Control, written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Interesting. Nice haircut. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. Well, I'm assuming what she's doing here is redoing the, the cupboard to lease it out for a thousand real a month a week I should say realistically we love rent prices what are you doing here I need to get it ready for the next lease but as you can see the previous tenant completely trashed the place okay um reprehensible who lived here it was some kind of a marabund old man who used to be a business owner You'd think they'd make rent. Hmm. Mor moribund old man. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted, or is that it? I'm in a hurry. Isn't it a bit late to be working? It is. <laughs> Breathes in, and to the count of three, it looks like some special stress release technique. Before she continues... Everyone says the real estate agents don't do anything. But here I am in the middle of the night cleaning up someone's crash pad. <laughs> so the sooner we get this over with, the better. She means you. Time for the next question. Uh, I glimpsed a foreclosed apartment down the hallway. Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... 
And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. Great. <laughs> a hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. The sum must have been puny. Um, my money has also disappeared, I think. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. <laughs> Couldn't have been that much money. These apartments look pretty shabby. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. And they are affordable. Yeah, a thousand real a week. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. <laughs> so, so wait, what happened with the wall? Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. She's still shaking her head. Manicured hands now crossed over her chest. All right, well, that's all. Thank you. Of course. Okay. Let's investigate. Uh, we've investigated apartment 10 for the cleaning lady. Uh, so we can report back to the cleaning lady. With that very useful information. Oh, nice. Postcard. Boogie Street, 46. This crumpled up postcard depicts an open air market in Boogie Street five years ago. A vendor smiles as dead roosters line his stalls, hung by their feet from canopy. Red blood flows onto the muddy street. Blurry shadows of people pass. Okay. Cleaning lady. Give me a moment. I didn't find any counterculture people in apartment 10. It was just a real estate agent setting up the room for new tenants. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. <laughs> Lax women and sexual deviants, that's who will come. <laughs> yes, radio computer wizards are coming. They're going to save the place and the economy. <laughs> no one is coming. There will be nothing but squalor unless we start killing real estate agents. God damn. <laughs> oh, I do like wizards. <laughs> and people like that in general. They have a lot to tell us about our fates. She means clairvoyance. <laughs> I'm off. Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. I, I guess I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a horse. A workhorse for hard work. Yeah, I do like horsing and riding horses for work. You're right. I am a workhorse. What hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and linoleum after you re-emerged. Nice. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way, and you won't let it break you. You ride. I fucking ride till I die, bitch. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules. But you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. I mean, yeah, I did take that bribe from that Joyce woman. Oh, yeah. You took that bribe hard. You're a killer. Oh, and then there's pawning stuff off to that suspicious Roy guy. Yeah, you're in the sales business. Shake him for shit and then pawn it off. Law officer style. I guess I've made some gill, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? 
but you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself. This is what doing YouTube is all about, baby. <laughs> now ask yourself, is this why you do YouTube videos? It's the grind, baby. It's the hustle. We hustling out that sweet, sweet content because we're enjoying it. It's fun. Are you rich? No, I'm actually not. That's right. <laughs> you work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? The system is broken! Boo-hoo. The system is broken. <laughs> the establishment is keeping me down. That's not the fuck here attitude you're used to. What is this? Why are you so poor? I'm, ch I'm gonna check all the options. It's because of that guard guy riding my ass. The guard man has set himself up one of those self-replicating money structures. You should learn from it. Don't play the victim. Think, hustler. Think with your head. There's a market for corrupt cops out there, but the immigrant crops have price dumped it. I don't want to say that. Fucking taxes, man. That's right. 100%. Fucking G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket. Stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart so much as sneeze. Really? Every time I sneeze? Farting, I get, but sneezing? Every time you wipe your ass, they got their direct and their indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax, alimony. One tax that doesn't even have a name. <laughs> Plus there's the stuff people in other countries pay for. That makes them ask for more money from you. Here, total tax duties add up to 98% of all your money. <laughs> oh, okay. Hang on a minute. We've got an we've got an opt-in. We've got another opt-in happening. So we've opted into communism. Now we're opting into the the like being the hustler, being the grinder. Rise and grind, baby. Gotta make that money. Gotta make that sh money. So, if I was pointing out the fact that it seems that the ultra liberal thing is mo tied to money and we're opting into political ideologies, it seems as if this is opting into ultra liberal. So, I feel it feels like you can opt into multiple political ideologies. I don't know if you're locked in once you maybe actually learn the thought that you get. As a result, though, that might be the case, because we currently have the communist thought. We just haven't internalized it yet. No fucking way. I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Opt in. We go from being a communist to also an ultra-liberal uh, in the span of two hours in the game world. <laughs> This isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's only making me into a free market type. Interesting. Let's just opt in. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. Yeah, baby. Money. Let's have a look at this. Uh, indirect modes of taxation. First, if you have a side bitch ideology cooking somewhere, don't sweat it. I like that it's like... <laughs> fucking... There you go, so it's an ideology thought, and I love that it literally addresses... Like, we already have one, and it goes, Look, if you have a side bitch ideology cooking somewhere, don't sweat it. Fighting indirect taxation for the Gossamer state is compatible with all creeds. It's cool like that. You're a cool anarchist now. Unless you don't want to be an anarchist. Whatever. Stuff this meal ticket in your eye socket and let's see if we can steal some love back from the robber barons at the customs agency and the banditos at the Insulindian Financial Oversight and Competition Committee. Interesting. So it does talk about having a side bitch ideology. So maybe you can actually have... Um, maybe you can actually have multiple. Uh, we don't know yet. We're going to have to unlock one and figure it out. This gives us a minus two on empathy while we're thinking about this one. Cold-blooded. But there you go. There's, uh, that's that. 
that's our I think that might be our hole in the wall and that's our exit so this is uh, I guess where we were knocking on the door before uh, ooh, and the balcony let's go to the balcony let's check the balcony oh the balcony will take us out to that person okay we don't want to do the balcony yet because there's a whole bunch of stuff out here hold on this is like an adventure out here and when we think about adventure we say in a second because I got to do this a note reads foreclosed by Martinez Realty Associates oh wow waves crashing in the darkness yeah you can advertise this bad boy we got bloody mattress broken mirror wallpaper peeling but we have ambiance baby fall asleep to the sound of the beautiful Martinez waves baby Someone has torn down the wall. And now we can walk right in. An old grocery list on the table and checks. What happened here? You can't foreclose on an apartment with a hole in the wall. It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Just make it a double apartment. <laughs> Except there's stuff in the fridge. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> What's in the fridge? Nice. Stuff in the fridge, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, now that we've done that, we can go out onto the balcony for that adventure that I promised you. And we can go and see what's out here. Oh, I like the pronunciations on the loading screen. It loads too fast, though. I'd barely even get a chance to really acknowledge the loading screen tips. Ruination has come. The broken arches betray the once grand history of this building. It towered over the harbor until it happened. Form a guess about what happened. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline fired from the water, a straight shot into Revachol. The tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. Take in the ocean. The waves of the Martinez Inlet rolled over the fallen remains of the building. The dark waters obscured the better part of the remains. What didn't fall into the ocean was used as scrap. What wasn't used as scrap were thrown into the ocean. Look at the ruins in the water. Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to twelve once did. Restoration has failed. What the shilling took out was never rebuilt. Yeah. Who did this? This damage was the coalition, right? A fleet. The combined armies of Occident and Grad. All oh, right. With Mesk volunteers. A five-nation army. Hundreds of vessels. So the Occident and Grad, Mesk Volunteers, Five Nation Army. What about a Seven Nation Army? Eh! Couldn't hold me back. They massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. They massed airships? God damn. Many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. Wow. Such like a, just a, a grim history as like a, f a constant reminder just always there, you know? Hey Kim, do you know who shelled our city? The Coalition. But that was a long time. Yeah, Coalition. I think we should move on. It's chilly up here. I'm understanding the history of the world now. I'm taking it in, maybe I'm learning. Time to go. Okay. What's up? The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. Have you ever heard of Hello? Like, instead of the, the ominous bullshit with your name being Cindy the Skull? The streets will not flow red with anything. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? 
date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. Uh, hep, yeah. Uh, when were you last tested? Obviously that's the first thing we need to address. Had a battery of tests just last week. I'm practically a patchwork of interesting critters. Kinda like a man of war. Okay. Despite the attitude, she puts the brush aside. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. You keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? The lieutenant is desperately searching for another handkerchief. Ah, she nods disdainfully towards Joyce, performing maintenance on her boat. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That is on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershot. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martin. Ah, so it's a, it's a rich jab. Okay. You mean Joyce? On a first name basis with her, are we? Piggy's moving up in the world. Hold on. What's his own? It's where they grow whores like her and their whore men. Why all the negativity? Have you got a crush on her? Aching for an opportunity to defend her honor. Oh, yeah. Give me some of that. Give me some of that mature. Mature ass. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what are you doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. Mm. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. So you don't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. I think you mean Kuno. We rarely see pigs round here, though. Just union cads. And my name's not Mona, so... Why are you so committed to defacing the building? This place is severely lacking in havoc. <laughs> not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know. Summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. Okay. I have an opinion on this. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. <laughs> this is hooliganism. I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. I love art. Make me something special. Do you know anything about the recent murder? I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Interesting. It's always the way that they clap back with saying they ain't no snitch, which means they know something. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. <laughs> is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. He says, studying the context of uh, Cindy's bucket. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. Hmm. Interesting. Fumes are bad for you. <laughs> That's some clever cultural commentary. You ain't seen nothing yet, piggy boo. Okay. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, ungulate. You've got eyes on you. Yeah, and you've got eyes on you too. You just wait. You just wait for my eyes. They will surprise you. Maybe. Uh, we've got a door there. And we've got a thought here. The door is locked. You can't get in. The chair's new. Someone lives back here. Yeah, okay. Above, wind tops flap in the wind. Forgotten hammers and nails rust. I love the thoughts coming into your mind in the different... Um, like the different skills, like based on your thought processes, it's it's really great. And how it just like just pops into your head and you have thoughts. It's awesome. I love it a lot. 
Let's have a look at the map real quick. We have, yeah, we have a bunch of shit. We have a bunch of stuff. I really wish that we could increase the scroll speed. I may as well just... I need to get used to clicking and just dragging it up there. Except it won't let me get to the... Why won't you... Okay. I'm trying to just drag it up to the... Oh. Oh. Weird. Okay, it won't let me drag it up to the top. It like... Uh, yep, it doesn't like it. It doesn't like it when I just click and drag it. I gotta scroll up really slow like. Interesting. Okay, let's head in here. Because this will be how we get to that dude's apartment. Now, what time is it at the moment? It is 9.40. So we are getting... Oh, wow. Doesn't look so good up here. Uh, we are getting closer and closer to the end of the debrief with Kim when we will almost be calling it a day. And there you go. So Ultra Liberal has now pushed us up to a 5, which is why we have definitely gotten that... Uh, that opt-in thought, so it makes sense. Someone's been sleeping here, recently. A hundred tiny feet scurrying beneath the grate, the rats of the city. Cindy? <laughs> Cindy might be sleeping here. Enough coal to last for several winters, smells of chemicals. Oh yes. Poor Lehom, laborer genes. Electrochemistry, minus one reaction speed. Are they short jeans? They look like they're cutoffs in the image. Are they cutoffs? No. All right, full jeans. Just the image obviously cuts them off. I thought they might have been jorts. I was excited. <laughs> God ass. Hindsighted. Oh, there's some good jokes, man. Good, good humor. Good humor. Hindsighted. Although these jeans look worn, the wearer must have had an ass given to them by the mighty lord himself. That beautiful peach-shaped man-ass has imprinted itself so deep into the fabric, you can't but wonder if wearing them would start moulding your own vague rear side into a more shapely form as well. Nice. Um, so, minus one. Plus one to electrochemistry. Okay, nice. So now we're just losing on reaction speed instead. Okay. What, if, what does this give us? Electrochemistry. So we've got a couple of pluses to electrochemistry. I could put that back on interfacing. Plus one to suggestion is actually... I was talking about how I wanted more suggestion, wasn't I? Because I keep losing a lot of suggestions. Interesting look. <laughs> Definitely an interesting look. The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. <laughs> Makes you look cool, calm, and collected. As your hand enters the pocket, your fingers brush against something soft yet crinkly. I fucking love that all of the clothing in this game is literally just sourced from just garbage, trashy areas, and we just put them straight on. It's so funny. And then another thing which is really cool, which I didn't even realize would be a thing, and it makes so much sense in hindsight is that you put some pants on or something like that and you get dialogue with your brain about it, you know? That's also really cool. So we've got something soft yet crinkly in our jean pocket. Take it out. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. We've had apricot chewing gum come up a bit. Isn't it tied to our ex? By the way, the raw materials were most likely exported from Seagai, the apricot suzerainty, and processed in Sir Le Clay into the apricot-flavoured chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Mm. Something about it is familiar, and not only to your fingers. Okay. We got gum. It's an interaction. Use interact button in inventory to inspect the item. Apricot chewing gum wrapper. A gleaming chewing gum wrapper found in the pocket of the laborer jeans. Gives us an ever so faint scent of apricots. Your mouth starts watering. There it is again. The scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon. Smells like the end of some distant summer. The surface of another planet. Or some ancient temple. Ancient temple? Yes. From the height of antiquity. A long, long time ago, millennia ago, on an island of time you can never return to. End of summer. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. 
Instead, it turns to liquid gold. For a moment, the world's store of precious metals seems to increase dramatically, and you are rich. I love the writing of just seemingly very innocent and small moments. It, the quality of the writing never dips. It never dips. Just like the, the, the poetic nature of, you know, talking about the sun. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. It turns to liquid gold. Like, it's, it's so good. There is a movement next to you. The shuffle of a small coat. Warm like the evening. But when you turn toward it, there's nothing there. My ex-partner. Wait, come back. Where did it go? Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? <laughs> Take a deep, deep breath. Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger, like a glow, with every breath you take. Whatever petrochemical byproducts they used to create this artificial flavor have bonded tightly to the wrapper. Or is that just your memory filling the gaps? Until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts behind your closed eyes, made of toffee, cream, and distance. You just had to take a dive. Interesting. Feels so, so familiar. So, so familiar. Put the wrapper away. Okay, so what we have now been given is a thought uh, of apricot chewing gum scented one. Reaction speed living in the past. You have found a trace of entity who's been stalking you across the plains. The gloom stalker, the conglomeration, the shadowy organization behind your downfall, possibly connected to the dreaded X something. Granted, it is impossible to determine its true identity, but you can remember where you first smelled its treachery. Yes, use the tutti fruity gum wrapper. Reconstruct the day you first breathed in her untrustworthy atoms. So we we can't internalize a thought right now because we're doing we're we're doing derealization, but we're we're getting more thoughts. So many thoughts in this game. Are we are we really limited to like to twelve slots? Crazy. You can only have so many bonuses at one time. I, I'm hoping that when you forget one, it does at least mean that you can kind of like re-equip them at will. But then the whole thing that you need skill points to do so makes it a bit interesting so I don't, we don't really have that nailed down yet as a as an understanding of that system there's some money though okay we can hear those rats let's get out of here oh okay, i forget that i can't just walk out i have to press the press the button to move out okay so oh yeah because this is just the balcony Um, so... Ooh, is the real estate agent gone? Real estate agent is gone. Yeah, okay. So she's, she's moved on, because obviously, you know, it's late, got stuff to do. Hey, money. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. Now it's a scientist type. Astrology. <laughs> that isn't just a five pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. Ah, inspect the symbol closer, a fellow comrade. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. Why is the star upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. What's the deal with the antlers? The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. Mm. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. Why white? Because white is the color of peace. What does it evoke in me? 
Oh God! Gone is the glory of hope. Only the scribblings of impoverished students remain in dirty hallways. So that I forgot, right? When it's on that fine, I yeah. When it when we're on that final thing, it goes quick. Heal yourself now. And then if I guess we'll fucking pass out or something will happen if we uh, don't heal ourselves quickly. Because I remember we obviously missed the timing the first time that it happened because I didn't realize it was happening. There you go. Just a thought coming by based on, you know, markings on the wall as well. Now, oh, here it is. There's another balcony here. I, I missed this. That makes sense. This is how we go up the stairs to where Smoking Man went. Oh, many thoughts. A maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east. You hear distant traffic. Night is falling on the city. The breaker box is full of cigarette butts and electric wires. The curtains shift just a little. Someone is watching from within. There's a lot to check out here. Someone's growing rosemary, thyme, and a cactus. Just a door. Nothing for you here right now. And then that is up there. We can't get up there yet. But there's bottles up there for us. Hello, just the local bottle collection man. I've come to make some I've come to make some profit because I love money. And the game this says I love money. Made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Twenty eight is the apartment number of the smoking man, right? Number 28. Yes. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Yes. So, very secure location, huh? Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. Knock. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. He looks around, taking in the cold spring air. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Okay, 9 p.m. tomorrow, let's do it. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Okay. Damn, turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry, you'll get him. Remember, tomorrow, he's probably gone for today. Probably. No one answers. We should return tomorrow. Tomorrow at 9 p.m. Okay. I was just trying one more knock. This is the door to apartment 29. Complete silence. Whoever lives here isn't home. This is the door to apartment 30. Voices from within. Singing along to some buoyant dance track. And I don't think that that's a... Yeah, that's a wall? Yes. Okay, I was wondering if you can walk through here, but I'm, it's, a, it's a little bit dark. Okay, so we need to get over there by different means. But there you go. We are coming back here tomorrow. Okay, nice. So, it's around about that time where Kim and I can have that debriefing on the balcony of the Whirling in Rags. We are almost done with day one, our, our first day on the job. It's been a very interesting one. We have vomited time and time again. We have gotten so much information. Uh, we've got so many tasks. We're doing a lot in a day, you know. And these kids, man, infinite time on their hands. In seemingly infinite time on their hands. Because, holy crap. They have been there all day throwing shit at that body. Um, it's probably a good time for me to run through areas of the place that I um, haven't been to yet with this bag and clean up the city. I don't know if cleaning up the city makes the time pass, though, however. Ooh, I think we can now actually investigate the bin again, now that we've changed the instance. There you go, okay. So you, you can still check. That's nice. I like this music when it comes in, it's very nice. The ambient music of this game is quite good. 
Now, the kid, obviously, because it's late at night, the kid's gone, but the light is still open. It's grey, though, so I think it's closed. It is indeed closed. There's still light coming in, though. The book is titled The Man from Helmdell and the Wildfire. Hang on, there was another thought. The book appears to be erotica, but without actual erotica. Ah, the thoughts appear when we're near the books. Over there. Cool. I'm gonna make some money tomorrow at Frit. I'm gonna cash this in, baby. Nice. Loving this. Okay. Have I investigated this before? I don't think I have. Worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. They don't, do they? Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Okay. Bench sitting comes after. Taking a look around for some for some bottles while we're here. What's this again? You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Oh, okay. I haven't I haven't looked at this yet. Uh, why am I looking at this? Cop habit. You look at everything. That is true. This isn't case related. You think? I look at everything, uh, except for when I don't. What kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Your vision is blurred. And you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. I wonder if my hangover will be gone tomorrow. Let's try and reconstruct the movement. No. These tracks are not interesting at all. Let the street sweeper just sweep them away. Okay. Failed. Just gonna pick up some bottles. And then we're going to go inside because it's almost 10. We'll probably just talk to Gart a bit while we're in there. We'll see if there's any actually, we'll see if the union, uh, the union group may have potentially shown up to the place. I don't think we can get over there, can we? That's probably tied to the secret door in the back of the kitchen. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. Ooh, what is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. I think I've already been around here before, but it was seemingly nothing apparently. But now perception is like, why am I looking at this pile of roofing material? Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. Ah. That's why they're too orderly. Pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. <laughs> Shabby little door. Nice. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Let's investigate. Oh. That doesn't look good. Silver plate with traces of bone, yellow, ponder. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. Mm. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. Interesting. He wants to see my reaction to it. <laughs> I've heard amphetamines make you a really good detective. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere? Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However, he points to the ladder in the corner. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? The secret path the local kids use. Interesting. The poster says, get out of the way or get fucked up. Uh, empty tube of Magnus Alarm magnesium supplement. Cured pig's head. It looks mummified. Okay. Hey! Shit. Oh, no, I can't get it. Oh, it's taking me somewhere. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Oh, wow. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. Is that mine? I guess it might be. Dude, when I clicked on that, I was like, oh, I, I literally was expecting it to just walk me into a wall and not allow me to move, but it took me up a place that I was not thinking I could go. When the wind ruffles the cloak, you can most definitely see a white <laughs> rectangle on its back. 
Is it mine? But apparently I didn't have one. But it's got the it's got the white rectangle. You son of a gun, it's a cop's cloak. Yes, it's probably yours. Nice. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. Okay. Thank you. He judges the drop. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Look around. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. Wow, that's quite a zoom out. Then he turns back to the sad piece of fabric flapping in the wind. What exactly are we doing here? What are we doing? We're awfully close to breaking into the industrial harbor. They are bound to have information for us. I thought that was our intention. So is this how we're gonna get is this how we get past Measurehead by breaking into the harbor? Or it could be that we are just exploring. He looks around, wind rustling his hair. Do you really think this cloak is mine? Should I go for it? Jump? The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it. He looks over the ledge at the cold pavement below. Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops. Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide. Let's go! Don't do it! No! Nope. No, that's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. You're a boxer. And you've climbed way too high up there. Oh, we're one point away. Vertigo almost pushes you over the edge. God damn it, Kim. Ah, my morale. Right shit, 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 shit. I'm failing you. This wasn't part of our deal. I know, I'm supposed to be an acrobat extraordinaire. I got you, I got you, Bratan. Let me just adjust your breathing a little bit. There. Isn't that better? Oh, tug on your tie, God. Now I can't breathe at all. Stop doing this to me, Necktie. You are supposed to be a friend. Hey. Hey. What's happening? You okay? <laughs> you sound genuinely worried. I'm all right, Kim. I just... I can't breathe. It's okay. You're just having a little panic attack. Try to breathe as slowly as you can, all right? He shakes you gently by the shoulder. The Necktie lets go a little. It's a vicious grip easing around your neck. Colors return to the world around you. Damn, thanks. I think it's working. Let go of your tie. Good. We can always come back when you are feeling better. It's just a cloak after all. Yeah, not right now. We don't need any vicious jumps right now. Apparently Kim wants to talk to us though. We should think about calling it today maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for damages yet. You should take care of that then. I think I have the money now. This is the money, right? Show him real bills. I'll also take a room at the Whirling. One cannot get much closer to the crime scene. Nice. <laughs> so, we can now join him on the Whirling and Rags balcony after 10 when you're calling it a day. So it's, uh, it is around, it is around that time. We can definitely come back up here tomorrow and check out everything else, you know another day and that's like the kind of cool thing is it's like they'll be here tomorrow there's some time sensitive things you know but you know we can just come back to it tomorrow obviously the most important thing is making sure that we pick up all these bottles but yeah i would have never have really seen this pathway if i didn't click on the jacket and it just took me all the way up there this doorway is going to collapse soon restoration pillars keep the ruins together Another postcard, Grand Curon 37. So that's our second postcard that we've found. This postcard depicts an ill-advised residential area overlooking the Jamrock Quarter. 13-story building lying at the hillside, like sarcophagi and ominous fog already rising from behind. These are the last, broom year, uh, the last boom years. In 39, the project fails catastrophically, leaving behind an OPA and hepatitis B infested slum. Interesting. Okay. Oh, hang on. Where's the... Wait. How do I get out of here? Oh, there. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, where am I? <laughs> we gotta go back through the roof. There we go. 
Now, we'll head back up there, we'll get those thoughts, we'll get more items, we'll get that jacket um, another time. For it is 10 p.m. It is quite late. It is quite late. It's time for us to do a debrief with Kim. So we'll get this room in the Whirling in Rags. I can pay back Gart. Now, uh, where was that? Pay for damages? How much money is it? It doesn't say. If you're unsure of how much, ask Gart. For some reason, it doesn't mark it in the actual... Um, <laughs> doesn't mark it in our task list, but let's see if we can pay him back using the money that Joyce gave us. <laughs> let's see if there's any changes to the whirling in rags. Yes, it has. Now, this is what I thought would happen, is there'd be a bunch of people in here. Bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. <laughs> it's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Pretty long. It's drink o'clock. boy. It's coming back to him. You had your mesolimbic reward pathway worried there. Not thinking about drinking all that time. It was like you weren't yourself. Actually, should I be thinking about this? It looks like drinking hasn't turned out too well for me. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. Don't lick it. What happened, man? You used to be cool. Go get your boring normal person drink. I will not. I will not succumb to the cell, the, the peer pressure of my own brain, electrochemistry. Get your drink on and your act together. I have booze. I can drink it if I want. It's in my inventory, so I'll do that for an easy quest completion for sure. Um, interestingly enough, the, the bar is in swing. People are here. There's people that I can talk to, uh, which means I don't think it's a good idea for us to close up the night at this current point. It's still after 10 p.m., and that's when we can, you know, have an end of day debrief with Kim. But there is still more to do. For example, finding booze and drinking it, getting to know the locals in the Whirling in Rags that we can talk to, and also seeing what Gart is potentially talking about or can talk about in the night time. So I think with that one, guys, we're going to bring this episode of Disco Elysium to a close. Next time, we will explore the Whirling in Rags once again. We'll head upstairs. We'll call it a night, we'll debrief with Kim, and we'll see what a new day brings. This has been a, a fantastic and fascinating episode of a lot of cool exploration and discovery. We've spoken to a lot of people, covered a lot of ground, and I really feel like I'm getting into a bit more of a, a rhythm and understanding of not only the game's world and story, but also um, how to interact with it a lot more, and I'm really, really enjoying it. So thank you so much for joining me for today's episode, and I'll see you next time.